Yeah, I, just so I could sit down. I didn't want to stand forever. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little out of tune. It actually tells you the note on your readout there. Isn't that nice? <laughs> and then he gets a green light when it's in tune. It's a red light when he's off. backwards because we're going to sing a song we often sing more on a good friday um were you there when they crucified my lord but but the character in our gospel lesson today mary mary magdala mary of magdala um was there at all those all those places when when he was crucified when when he was taken down from the cross, when he was laid in the tomb, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all say that that uh, that the Marys were there. I like the way Matthew puts it, that they were sitting there watching as Jesus uh, across the way was laid into the grave. And especially when he rose up from the dead. So that's number 456, if for some reason you need the words, which you really shouldn't. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? from 
chapter 20 at verse 11. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look <coughs> into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. That's a great, a great passage. I, um, there's a lot of things to think about. One, one that you might not have thought about before. Sometimes when you read God's Word in a narrative sense, like in the Gospels, as opposed to one of the letters, um, consider if you were, take your camera, you know, what would you see if you were looking at it? Where are people standing? Where are they looking? Who's, who's facing whom? Who's talking to whom? Um, it surfaces some interesting things sometimes. Uh, how far away certain people are from the action, you know, what are they perceiving from where they're at. Uh, we always look at everything with a long lens. We, we, you know, like we're up close, we zoom in, but, but back up a little bit and look and see what's going on. It says that Mary, she's standing outside the tomb weeping. And the other disciples, are, that is Peter and John, have come and, and gone away again. And she stoops down to look in, and the angels speak to her. She turns around to see Jesus, whom she thinks is the gardener. Then, um, and she speaks to him, but then when he speaks to her, it says, she turned to him in Aram uh, turned to him. So, so evidently, at, after she said, do you, tell me where you put him, she's turned away from him again. And, and apparently that, where have you put him? It's, where, you know, looking around, where is he? And then she turns back to Jesus. So she's there, she turns to the tomb, she turns to Jesus, she turns around, she turns back to Jesus. That, that really, to me, characterizes what's going on in her mental state. She is, she is spinning around in circles. She's looking in every which way for where is Jesus? Which direction do I go? Uh, the, the confusion in her mind, in her heart, and in the rest of the disciples is pictured in that, in her posture. In, you know, this way, is it like when you've lost something and you check your pockets, you look in your purse, where are my glasses? <laughs> You, uh, did you find out where my glasses are? Hey, all right. <laughs> We've been looking for, we were looking for these for three, three days. days. <laughs> and then they rose up. <laughs> After three days, where were they buried? They were in my pocket. In my, <laughs> okay. Uh, this, this confusion and, and, uh, and it's resolved with one word. And what is the word? Her name. Jesus speaks her name. And after that, then it's, then there's that connection and she's grounded again. She's centered again. She knows where, where to look again. I 
It's so sad. People without, without Jesus, they look in every different direction. Up and down and side to side and under things. And, you know, where's the answer to these problems or issues about life? And um, how am I going to solve this? What am I going to do about that? Uh, how are we going to fix the world? And you look at our society. This spinning in circles. But when Jesus speaks your name, when he calls you, then you know where to look. And you don't need to be wandering your eyes, you know, looking at other things. Jesus' disciples are still confused. They're looking at the Roman soldiers. They're looking at the Jewish authorities. They're looking at the world. What are we going to do? Until Jesus comes. And they know they can look at him. And that's true whether he is visibly present outside the tomb with you or if he is not seen by you except except in his word we look to jesus and we know where to go we know who to follow we know it's going to be okay we know that he knows where he's going and where he's leading us a lot of times in our lives we're confused. This last year has been a very confusing one. But I thank God that every morning we've been looking to his word. And in the midst of all this mess, I think we've found a much easier path. Still lots of problems. It's still in the world. But we know where we're going. We're going with Jesus home. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son. Lord, turn our eyes always to him. He has called our name. He has written our names in his book. And you say in, in John's Revelation that our names are written on the palm of your hand. Father, world around us, our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers are turning this way and that, pursuing many things. Lord, teach us how to call their name, how to, uh, to convey to them the calling of Jesus, that they may trust in him, find him, Follow him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You have a blessed day.